I'm Frederick Gerten. I'm the filmmaker. I'm Leilani Farha. I'm the advocate. Frederick, it seems like you've been kicking up some dust in Malma. What's going on? Yeah, it's a. It's actually quite a sad story because you know this is like a, a small town and which is very much a startup town. So there's a lot of young, cool people doing great stuff. And and one of the companies is called Oatly. They produce oat milk. And they've been growing in an extremely quick way uh, by, by being a very sustainable company. Right. And they are really, and I'm, I met, I know the CEO and I know a lot of people who work there. And it's really nice people. They're really full of, of values. They mm. really want to change the world. They want to fight the climate change. It's been a little bit downhill because some time ago they, they sold a bit big share to a company linked to the government in China uh-huh. uh, to be able to enter into the Asian or the Chinese market. Right. But now this week, they got a little bit closer to you and me, so they also sold 10% of their shares to Blackstone. I did see that. It was $200 million. So for this small Malmö company, a big chunk of money. Absolutely. And of course, they have all seen our film push mm. so they could kind of they knew that they they will they would got get some kind of resistance when this story got out so they were really well prepared but i, I made a quick facebook post and some twitter post and it like it said boom people reacted very strongly and then what were the your posts like what sorts of things were you saying at the first when you first got wind of this what was your immediate reaction it was, you know, thinking of my friends mm. uh, working there and this that this was, you know, from us being, you know, being following Blackstone for some time. So we, it's, I mean, of course, it's their, their enter into the global housing market, which is like something we've been talking a lot about. But also, suddenly, they're also owners of or companies in Brazil, which are building in the, the big soya harbor out in Amazonas where the forest is burning, like, you know, the soya beans grown in Amazonas, where you take out rainforest, you ship them to China, or inside China, you truck them out to, to pig farms, to chicken farms, to whatever, fish tanks, you know, it's, it's like the most unsustainable way of producing food on the planet. It's right. big agribusiness. So Blackstone is in that, and now they're also entering into this company who has been branding themselves with values that are really cool. So that, that was, that's what my first statement. Mm-hmm. Then the local newspaper here, Sejtsvenska Dagbladet, asked me to write a story, right. which was published yesterday or, well, a few days ago. Mm. And, uh, and that also, you know, the, the storm took on. Mm. Leilani, you're you're a vegetarian. You you I you am. drink oat milk. <laughs> I know? have, and I've I've had oatly milk. As a matter of fact, yeah. I remember. In fact, you telling me, uh, I can't remember where we were, but I, I maybe it was New York, and I put some. I saw this oat milk, and then you said, "Oh, that company's from Alma." So, I mean, I know the company, and um, I was proud. I was yeah, proud. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should be very clear about. Blackstone and why your reaction was what it was uh, in light of you know who Blackstone is, what they what they're about and 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 our involvement with them through push. Yeah, so I think that's why we, we you, you and I should talk about. It. We mm. shouldn't talk so much about oat milk. People have a lot of opinions about oat milk, mm-hmm. but we are actually more about Blackstone and they Absolutely. are Blackstone, they are a private equity firm. What is that? <laughs> what is a private equity firm? Good question. And it's not what most people think. Um, when I first started learning about Blackstone and private equity, I kind of thought they had their own money somehow, that somehow they were investing their money into different assets. Um, but in fact, what they do is they get other people's money 
whether it's individuals of ultra high net worth and their money, whether it's pension funds, insurance companies, um, and they they take that money and in fact, they don't really, well, they're an extractive industry. And uh, uh, what they do is they leverage off of the money that they have. So in fact, they get huge loans from banks and are very involved in the banking industry. And that gives them the liquidity, helps them with liquidity so that they can then go and purchase different assets. So in fact, they're not, um, the risk isn't really their own. The risk is other people's money. uh, And they're not, they don't create that much value. They extract value. That's what they're looking for. So now, now I understand why people prefer to talk about oat milk. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> because, exactly. And, but the, and, it, it, and this is like the social media has been exploding, I mean, yeah. in, in my thread. And of course, a lot of people also talk about Blackstone mm. and so on. But, but the, the financial world is it's so complicated and they're so it strong. Is. And still, we, 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 it's easy to talk about if we like that oat milk or the other oat milk or the real milk. So it's like it's for us, all of us. It's this is like it's hard to put a finger on. But anyway, we met when we shot uh, uh, Push. We met with Saskia Sass, an amazing sociology professor at um, Columbia and also at the London School of Econo- Economics. And and she talks a little about about what you said here, the extractive sector. Mm-hmm. Let's listen to to Saskia Sass. Finance is very different from. The bank. We all need banks. That's fine. That's a, you know, it sells something. We pay money for that. Finance is totally different. I always say, finance sells something it does not have. And in doing that, it needs to actually invent brilliant instruments that allow it to invade other sectors. And that means that finance is basically an extractive sector. It might as well be mining. And the difference between finance as mining and the traditional bank is that the traditional bank wants the sons and daughters of its current clients to do better because it it's commerce finance it's like mining once it has extracted what it needs it doesn't care what happens with the rest so what do you think it means to get a new owner of your company that is blackstone what i mean People ask me and the people ask around what I mean, because some people say, but this is money. Isn't it good that money from big money goes towards uh, plant food? Mm. Well, I mean, if we take Saskia's words and try to apply them here, then we have to understand that what Blackstone is doing with Oatly presumably is trying to extract profits from the company that will benefit Blackstone's investors. I mean, Blackstone is a profit-driven company, period. It's not human-driven. It's not environment-driven. They, they're not climate justice people. This is not peace, love, and happiness. This is profits. And, I mean, that was my reaction when I heard that they were investing in Oatly and that Oatly, not just from the sounds of it, and you can you can tell me more, Frederick, because you've been in direct conversation with the CEO uh, through the media and social media, etc. But my understanding uh, is that Oatly courted Blackstone. They wanted very much Blackstone's money. It was a purposeful act to take their money. And I found it shocking because, as I said, this is not a benign company. And it's not that they have some good arm and then maybe a kind of not so good arm through real estate. They they are driven, period, by profit and extraction, as uh, Saskia said. So for me, there's something very repugnant about that. But what do you what do you know about Blackstone? I mean, you you have research and you made uh, you made an official communication from the UN towards six countries mm. uh, about Blackstone's practice. Also, you wrote straight to Blackstone. You actually asked to meet them several times, and uh, what I understand, they have never. Yeah. really come, came back to coming back yeah to you. well absolutely they refused to meet with me uh, I'm a human rights lawyer and I was trying to get them to abide by international human rights law and, and standards uh, 
Blackstone is a company that has preyed on the vulnerability and economic ruin of families uh, in the United States in particular. That's how they got their start in the residential real estate business. It was after the global financial crisis. Families were in, in it were economically distraught, uh, facing bankruptcy and extreme poverty. Blackstone swooped in, purchased the cheap debt of, of all of those foreclosed homes and turned those homes into rental accommodation and started charging exorbitant rents, renting homes back to former homeowners. So they used the ruin of people, um, the economic ruin of people for their own fortunes. In fact, in Push, uh, there's a really wonderful um, um, piece uh, that really exposes Blackstone for who they are. Maybe we can listen to that clip. We're the largest real estate private equity firm in the world. We've got investments in people around the globe. But by keeping our business entrepreneurial, we can move very, very quickly. John Gray is the global head of real estate for Blackstone Group, which is the world's largest private equity manager. So one of the uh, markets you went into was single family homes. And I know you have a big portfolio. Was it 50,000 or? Yes. Somewhere? 50, Tell 000. us about that. So how do you um, even find 50,000 yeah. homes to buy? You need a, a, a global financial crisis for that to occur. Um, you're sitting around in 2011. You're saying, where is there a large pool of assets uh, that are going to be sold by financial institutions? Um, at big discounts to underlying replacement costs. And it was pretty obvious it was single family homes. Um, let's spend 25,000 or so fixing them up and then let's rent them out and make income producing assets out of them like an apartment business, but just not in one large complex. But if we do it in enough scale, you you still I can see you watching this and you still get really angry. Can you I can't stand I mean, the complete erasing of people from their equation is what gets me. And, you know, Oatly as a company, this is what the for me, the rub is Oatly as a company says, you know, in their own promotional materials that they're a good company or wanting to do good, that they believe in upgrading people's lives. And they've just made this $200 million deal selling off 10% of their company to Blackstone who cares nothing about people's lives. And that clip, in my opinion, exposes that. I mean, they control $324 billion worth of residential real estate. So the two hundred million that they gave to Oatly, I mean, I don't know. Does that erase the three hundred and twenty-four billion dollars they've made off the backs of individuals who are just trying to make you know make a decent life for themselves? I, I get so angry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably not. And and the guy speaking here was Jonathan Gray, who is one of the big yeah. stars of of, uh, of Blackstone. And he was actually a guy you had a meeting set up with who then suddenly couldn't make it. That's right. And, and I just, while the clip was rolling, I was checking on Google the classical Jonathan Gray net worth. What uh, do you think yeah. it landed on? Oh, no idea. Multi-billions. It wasn't too much. It was $3.9 billion net worth. $3.9 billion. So his, his boss, the founder, Stephen Schwartzman, right. he's, he's richer that's right. And so he's the president of Blackstone, um, and his net worth is $18.7 billion. Mm -hmm. So tell us <laughs> a little bit more about Stephen Schwartzman, because he's like an important guy in the game, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've tried in my work not to make it too personal. Um, I've gone after Blackstone and their their business model because it does undermine the right to housing for um, not just people in the United States. This is across the globe. Um, I, I, I wrote letters to governments of um, Denmark, Sweden, the United States, Spain, uh, Ireland, um, and the Czech Republic. Uh, but and 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 of course, Blackstone is elsewhere. They're they're very big in India in the mortgage lending business, um, and they are elsewhere. Many many other countries. My I've tried to make my concern about the company and the business model. 
The CEO Schwartzman. He's a, he's a, na- he's a neighbor of uh, Trump, isn't he, in Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, exactly. Well, and he curries a lot of political favor. I mean, he he is one of Trump's insiders. Um, he provides economic advice to the Trump administration, both formally and now informally. So, I mean, that's one of the things about this situation with Oatly. Like, this is the big leagues, right? This is... To me, like this isn't child's play. What's what what Oatly has engaged in here? This is very serious stuff. This is the big structural stuff that societies are grappling with. And and Schwartzman at the helm is a big player. I mean, y- you don't get a seat at the president's table unless you're a big player. So. Um, anyway, so Schwartzman, I mean, he just, you know, he curries a lot of favor. One of the things that he's been trying to do recently, he wrote a book that actually didn't do very well, as I understand it, but he wrote a book. And one of the things he's trying to do, I think, is show his better side, let's say. He's been investing in universities, research funds, you know, trying to show that he cares about education, for example. And and so, you know, I think Oatley plays into this um greenwashing, whatever you want to call it, of Blackstone. I, I think, um, yeah, I, they're, they're legitimizing, uh, they're legitimizing Blackstone in a way. Because, it, because it's interesting because um, we've seen a lot of stories there. I mean, I, I think it's at Oxford University. He wanted to donate, uh, have his own building there. And there is a lot of uh, uh, voices being for years now opposing they. People don't that's even right. want to have a Schwartzman building at the university. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, w- one thing that's interesting, I, I had the opportunity to visit the University of Colorado, the law school. Um, the dean of the law school uh, is a, a, a fellow named James Anaya. He's very well-known human rights lawyer, actually. He's indigenous and um, used to be the special rapporteur on the rights of indigenous peoples. And I brought to his attention... Um, what I knew about Blackstone, it was before the release of Push. Uh, He was interested to know that I was engaged in this documentary with you. And so I was talking to him about it. And he was like, Blackstone, big question mark. I said, Yeah, that's the one of the main actors. And he said, Oh, my gosh, well, they are going to give us a huge endowment uh, to do some uh, to set up a research institute on um, uh, artificial intelligence and morality. And I was, you know, super surprised. And uh, fast forward a few months ago, um, Dean Anaya of the law school contacted me and said that they had decided to reject the endowment wow. from Blackstone. Wow. Uh-huh. So some people are making different decisions than Oatly. Uh, and it was, on a, it was a, from a, a place of principle. Uh, um, you know, Dean Anaya just didn't want to be associated with Blackstone because he knew that Blackstone was, was a human rights violator uh, in a very major way. Hmm. So let's try, I mean, let's try the arguments from Oatly because... Yeah, I want to hear, I want to uh, hear the, what Oatly has been CEO, saying to you. The CEO, Tony Peterson, he's, he, is, he is actually a very nice guy. Right. And I mean, he contacted me already when we had released Bananas, uh, where we got sued from Dole Food Company. And, right. And, and Oatly was really early on sued by the, the big Swedish milk because they ah. called themselves milk. So they were in a right. legal fight. And they, they kind of copied, they liked how we fought back. Right. Because we fought back with our websites, publishing our defense, but also all the accusations from Dole. So every okay. journalist who wanted to find both sides, they had to go to our website. Right. So if they, if, the, if they were going to Dole's site, they got only Dole's arguments. So we, we were like the, we were the transparent ones. And, right. and I think they, they really liked that one. So we, uh, we've been in talks, and I, I, and I know him since before he got into this uh, job. He's been there for like eight years, I think, as okay. a CEO. Uh, but in today's, well, in the newspaper here in, in Malmo, he, he answers me. And he's it's like, it's a, it's a it, I mean, basically he says that we are taking... I mean, we make we we could have gone for you know green funds, mm. but now we're actually taking money that could have gone elsewhere. So we are making mm. like dark money light in some way. Um, 
That's one argument. Mm. <laughs> and the other one is that they are now making one of the biggest, the biggest private equity firm to kind of take the Oatly values and making them their own values. So they're actually reshaping right. Blackstone. That's one of the arguments. And then okay. he actually says here in the text, uh, he's, he's, it's, it's, a very, it's very nicely written and it's yeah. very friendly, you know. So and he actually recommends people to watch Push. Nice. So it's nice. Okay, that's good. And he says, ironically, maybe Push already changed Blackstone. So it's actually... <laughs> Uh, push who made Blackstone go into Oatly because now Blackstone wants to do better. So, ironically, he says, maybe you and I, Frederick, are on the same path, but with different methods. So tell me your reaction to all of that, Frederick. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> especially that last one. I think that's super interesting. Yeah, for me, I, this is you and me, Tony. Uh, it, <laughs> I mean, it's, he's a nice guy, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it pisses me off a little bit because it's, it's not so honest. Mm. Uh, because when, you, I mean, he's, of course, also a shareholder. And when you're bringing in a lot of money from China, a lot of money from Blackstone and from other places, his own net worth is going up, you know. So right. he will also get closer to buy his first yacht. <laughs> if he fancy yachts, I don't know. Right. But I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, and. I can tell you, I'm quite far away from even buying a little, <laughs> a little small <laughs> one-man boat. You know, it's like it's it, we are not we are not in the same playground. And I and I've seen this before when we got sued for for the film Bananas. Mm -hmm. uh, it was always Frederick Gerton versus Dole. You know, it's like it's right. it, they put us on like we are on the same level. You know, it's like right. it's. He, Tony, is the CEO of a huge corporation. They yeah. are building a global brand. Yeah. He has, he can do something. Of course, I mean, it might be his board that tells him, Tony, this is what we're going to do. Mm. And you have two options, sell it or go, you know, mm -hmm. probably. Uh, and he's trying to sell it. And, I, mm. and of course, this is, it's, it's painful for them. It's painful, and they're trying to kind of repaint the, the story. Uh, but do you believe that 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 this that we have uh, changed Blackstone? No, of course not. And if we had changed Blackstone, we would have changed them in terms of their real estate practices. And on the same day that the Oatly story, or a couple of days after the Oatly story broke, I read because I received Blackstone's newsletter, I read that they had just closed a new real estate, secondaries they call it, but it's a real estate fund valued at $1.9 billion. In other words, they had gotten together all these investor monies and they now, had one, they now have $1.9 billion ready, a new fund, to go and purchase more properties. So... You know, and that will include residential real estate, I'm quite certain. So we have not had a direct impact. I don't think us pushing Blackstone through the film Push has resulted in them uh, investing in Oatly. It's not, it's not related. It, and also what makes me very sad with all this is that we've been out, you know, we, we, I mean, I understood understand that half of all the money on the global stock markets are pension fund money. That's so right. it's so the flow of pension money mm. can actually can decide a lot. Mm. And there's been a very strong movement for like 30 years, for basically started by the churches against investments in weapons. Uh, but there's also been a very strong divest movement towards uh, oil and coal. Mm -hmm. which has been really successful. So a lot of big pensions funds, you know, in New York and other cities have divested. Even the, the, the Norwegian oil fund have divested, divested uh, coal, for example. So it's right. like there is a lot of things happening. Mm -hmm. and, and after the release of Push, there has been a lot of talks about people personally divesting right. uh, Blackstone funds, but also 
the, all the big banks here in Sweden have got questions about their Blackstone investments, and I, I heard some of them have moved out. So when what Oatly now is doing is actually taking, giving the finger to this movement to <laughs> try to to uh, to find a new way to kind of ethical uh, investments because mm-hmm. I think ethical investment can be really important. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I I don't have a lot of pension money, but I would like the little pension money I have, I would like it to be invested in something that creates a better planet. Mm-hmm. And and I don't want to have it in something that burns down Amazonas. Mm-hmm. And I don't want it to go into to drilling under Greenland or, you know, out, you know, I, 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 I think, I mean, the climate change is a real thing. And but also, I mean, and uh, Tony also says he's all in to fight climate change. Mm. But he misses one thing that I know is really important for you. He talks about sustainability, but he doesn't talk about social sustainability. Exactly. That's, yeah. That would be your point, I that's, guess. Well, that's uh, that's a, you raised that point, and I think that's a very good point. Um, I, one of the things I've struggled with, and I I thought that's what what you were trying to do with push and certainly I've been trying to do in my own work is to connect some dots and Tony from what you're telling me hasn't made the connection between his company who invests in it and broader social circumstances which I think is your point about social sustainability and and that would be my point too which is these things are connected and global actors like Blackstone in fact should force us to make those connections because they're they are um, they have tentacles everywhere so I I don't view I don't see how by investing in a plant-based company while ruining the lives of low-income people around the world, I don't see how the plant-based company cancels out the misery that Blackstone is causing. Um, I, I, I think we have to see those things as connected, that you, that you want people who drink plant-based milk to also be able to afford their apartments. But he actually <laughs> sells it as he is, that, that Oatly, uh, they're actually brave. They could have gone for green money, now they go for this money. But it's, uh, it's probably just some kind of uh, trying to polish something. <laughs> well, you mentioned to me, because everything's in Swedish, you've had to translate everything for me. But as I understand it, you said that at one point they said something like uh, that they're that they made a difficult decision and an uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. decision uh, to take Blackstone's money. What's your reaction to that? Uh, yeah, that it's it seems a bit conventional to go after the big money. I mean, because imagine if he came out and said, we had an offer from Blackstone, $200 million dollars. Can you imagine we turned them down? Now, friends, we need your help to to raise that money. You know, we we need to go somewhere else. We need we need partners on a long journey, the real partners who share our values. But this is, I mean, you know, this is like the talking points. I can see this coming up because I was also there is some really good people called the Fair Finance Guide, so they're okay. actually looking into the fair the the finance industry. And to, to check out, you know, ethical investments and so on. And they here, the Swedish chapter made a, a report a, a few months ago, and it was about the sustainable funds in different Swedish banks. You know, I want to save in sustainable investments. That's mm-hmm. what I I've, I've been doing uh, with my small savings. And now it's coming out that some of the sustainable money sits in in palm oil in Brazil, in soya in Brazil. Mm. And so when I saw that, I went to my ba- bank office, actually, <laughs> and said, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, I, I, was, I was like, and of course, the poor guy said, I don't know anything, but I, yeah, I will get you back. So, and of course, some, somebody was writing me uh, a long, long, long lot of uh, words. And, and now 
again it came up so i've been i tagged a few banks uh nowadays a few days ago uh about this it's like three or four of the biggest banks here mm. and they all answered with the same language a language quite close to the language of tony okay you know we we want to stay inside because mm. inside we can have an impact because we we also support that UN initiative and we support that initiative and so on sustainable mm. blah mm. blah blah but we have to stay inside these companies because with that influence we can change them so this is this is uh, what do you think about that because for me it's like it's 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 uh, it's it's like Asset manager, we you've met them. You you've met more asset managers than managers than me. But mm. they, their what is their main goal? Mm. What is their job? Well, their job is to to create more profits. But I I think the point you're raising goes back to to something you said before. So imagine if they had if Oatly and Tony had done a press release saying exactly what you said. Mm. We were approached by Blackstone and they wanted to give us $200 million and we decided no. I think if we're looking at change making, you know, Tony's a CEO of an up and coming, you know, very cool business product, etc. Very here and now plant based, you know, milk, etc. And what Tony did instead is he leaves it to the documentary filmmaker and the underpaid the underpaid documentary filmmaker and the underpaid advocate to continue to try to push out a message that Blackstone is is a human rights violator and whereas Tony could have had and has a much a more sort of established platform. And so for me, that's part of the problem here in this insider approach. You know, I wonder, I can't help but wonder whether what I said before is actually quite attractive to Tony and his board of directors, which is Blackstone's a big player with a ton of political power. And so this is a question for you and I, Frederick, by taking Blackstone's money, is Tony right that that somehow gets him and his company into some positions of power that they wouldn't otherwise have access to? And suddenly we all become Oatly drinkers and we understand environmental sustainability more? I mean, I guess that would be Tony's point. I don't know. I mean... Yeah, I, no, that is that, that is his point. I mean, he, he still believes that... If more people people drink uh, plant based or eat plant based, uh, he, we will save the planet, mm -hmm. and and of course maybe that's that's a valid that's a valid point. But the question is, does does he get closer to that goal by taking this money from this big political power, Blackstone? And I would say my answer to that is. No, because Blackstone doesn't want to share their power with Oatly. Blackstone just wants to take the profits out of Oatly and be profitable itself. They're yeah. not trying to share power with Oatly. I, that's my opinion. I, I think that's, I mean, I think it's also, which I talked about this, the talking points of, of, of all this big money now, that they, a friend to me who, is, who lives in Paris wrote also to me saying, mm. That is, this is the lingo of Tony is the lingo he can hear in San Francisco. Cool guys with new designer jeans eating avocado <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sandwiches, <laughs> and they could they could deliver the same kind. They are really sustainable. They are really cool. They, they they know exactly what the values are of today. Yeah. But then, what's around the corner in San Francisco? You've seen it. Tell me. Mm. Under the bridges. Wall-to-wall -wall homelessness, absolutely. Uh, people living in the, the most obscene and horrible circumstances amidst a huge amount of wealth. Yeah. That's San Francisco. So if you want to be really cool, uh, you have to be cool or a little bit... You have to think a little bit wider, I guess. Mm. Uh, and you have to care a little bit more about uh, people suffering around mm. you. And, of mm. course, also the suffering of our planet. Um, 
So, so I, there, is, there is a connection, and I think, mm. but I, it's, it's also I, because I, it's still, I mean, you can imagine if Blackstone, you know, if the private equity firm like Blackstone suddenly the pensions fund said, yeah, great deal, but we prefer to go with a more sustainable private equity firm, mm. you know. Uh, I mean, that could, I mean, it could exist. I mean, for sure, as we know, Blackstone is supporting Trump, is supporting, I mean, they were Absolutely. putting money into fight AOC. They're putting money into this big campaign in, you know, uh, legislation in, in California. Rent, rent control in California. Yeah. I mean, they're putting money into everything that is making the planet worse. That's also right. with their political money. So, Absolutely. I mean, I guess there could be a, a nicer private equity fund. So probably with, with some problems also, but this is like mm. the worst. Mm. Such, a, such a good point about their relationship with Trump. I mean, we know Trump's relationship to climate change, for example, mm. Mm. and, and um, we know that, that uh, he, his administration has done nothing uh, to advance uh, a healthier environment uh, globally and within the United States. So, I mean, Oatley's position is pretty interesting in that way. I have to say, I just now I, I had a moment of feeling very low, and I realized what it is. I actually think Oatley has just made my job much harder because now Blackstone is being celebrated through Oatly as progressive and giving to this plant-based company, et cetera. And so now I have to counter that and tell the story, the story of push. We have to get push out even more, Frederick, because yeah. Yeah. there's a whole story here that needs to be told. And and he's and and Tony and Oatly have made that harder for us, actually. That's my yeah. and that revelation. Was, and that's true. That's how we started up, how I felt about all this, because mm. I actually feel sad. Mm -hmm. I really honestly feel sad about this mm -hmm. and and uh, and and it's 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 more uphill now and exactly. and and I also read that in in the more established commentary I mean they, in the financial press and so on mm. they a little bit ridicule uh, everything and they also ridicule Oatly saying ha mm. ha ha you were so fancy modern hipster and now you're getting this Mainstream. but it's yeah. but it's still you know so we, we are we in some way we are losing an alley that's kind of the feeling of it even they were lost long time ago probably mm. but it's it's sad mm. but it's good i think we it's it's nice to talk <laughs> about these things yeah. because we and and the, you know the uphill thing we have is we have to understand even more what a private equity firm is because it's still Absolutely. blurry. Yes, and I agree. And you, I, I mean, I, I was just checking up. They are sitting on about around six hundred billion mm -hmm. dollars yep. of assets. Can you can you understand how much six hundred billion is? Nope. Dollars. Nope. And neither can you. And neither can anyone else. <laughs> It's impossible to understand. It's a huge, huge amount of money. So it's it's probably the most profitable company on the planet. Mm. They have. Can you do you know how many employees they have? Blackstone. No, no. Around two thousand eight hundred. You know, so it's like hardly any employees. They don't Crazy. really create jobs. No. You know. No. But they're out there fishing for profits mm. everywhere and mm. they are not really putting them into something that's that makes this a better world they, they put probably much more than they give to to Oatly into political campaigning and and to to keep oh absolutely to, yeah they invest money not to change the world that's right you know? absolutely. Oatly says we want to change the world Blackstone invest money in the totally different direction yeah and that's not your friends and that will also go for the for the investors from china who is in oatly they are not really do you think that oatly can change china yeah exactly such a good question of course not so my friend this was <laughs> this was <laughs> a new chapter of our uh, pushback talks 
so we i mean that's the only thing we can do is push back and of course that's right. hopefully we will have more friends helping us out there's been a lot of social media and if you listen to this tell your friends about uh, the pushback talks and uh, to spread the world because we don't at this moment we have no sponsors we have no money <laughs> So we are doing this because we are stupid and we don't celebrate <laughs> vacation times or whatever, uh, because we want we want to keep talking about stuff. Uh, talking is how we will change the world. Yeah, a little bit anyway. But uh, you can also watch film. The film Push the Film. You can find it on pushthefilm.com. You can also follow Leilani's work in in uh, in, in the shift on maketheshift.org. And please follow us on, on, on Twitter and so on, uh, Frederick Gerten, Leilani Farah, uh, Push the Film, and so on. And uh, next week, see you again. I'll see you again. Thanks, Frederick. Yeah. So are you now going on hike somewhere? Or? <laughs> I am. I'm going to go to a lake. You'll see me at a lake next week. That's cool. I, it's actually nice here, so I'm going to bike down to the sea. Nice. I was actually considering of bringing a bottle of wine. I oh, think it's, yeah, sounds it perfect. It's, it's Friday. It's, it, yeah, it will be. It will be nice. Well, we don't know what day this is coming out. If it's Friday or not. This is but anyway, true. <laughs> but that's <laughs> like true. the exciting thing. We are not that professional yet in our <laughs> podcasting. That's fine. Okay, see you soon. Ciao. Bye, Frederick.